The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship in St. Mark's Church, worshiping here in the Smith Kinnis Church building today. It's good to see you here. You braved through the waters. Uh, I came up past Craigton and was regretting it. Seemingly the high road might be the easiest way to get in and out of the town. No, someone's shaking their head, so make your own mind up, I'm afraid. Hope you all get home safely. Uh, and also, the heating was meant to click in, but it's not clicked in, so it's a wee bit chilly this morning too. So stay wrapped up, but it's good to see you, and welcome if you're worshipping from home as, as well. Our opening praise is hymn 63, the words of Psalm 100, all people that on earth do dwell, hymn 63. For those of you who were not at worship last week, I should say that I announced I am moving to a post in 121 George Street and my final Sunday will be the 5th of November. And so that means that today will be the last time I lead worship here in Strathkinis Church. Let's pray. Living God, you have spoken to your people across the centuries you identified yourself with humankind in Jesus Christ. You dwell within us through your Holy Spirit, making your presence come alive. Accept now the worship we offer and use us for your kingdom. Loving God, having come to us, you call us to come to you, promising that in Christ we shall find rest for our souls, that through Christ our spiritual hunger shall be satisfied, 
and that from Christ we shall receive life in all its fullness. Accept now the worship we offer and use us for your kingdom. Gracious God, we come in response to your call to offer our worship, our thanks, our confession, our lives. Accept now the worship we offer and use us for your kingdom. Sovereign God, we come seeking your guidance, your strength, your renewal and your will. Accept the worship we offer and use us for your kingdom. Lord of all, help us to come to you not just as an outward gesture, a matter of routine or duty, but in heart and mind and soul. Help us to make space in our hectic lives to be still in your presence. And so may we live in you and you in us. Accept now the worship we offer and use us for your kingdom. We ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior. Amen. Listen for the word of God. The first reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3, which can be found on page 200 of the Pew Bible. <coughs> Faith gives substance to our hopes and convinces us of realities we do not see. It was for their faith that the people of God, people of old won God's approval. By faith we understand that the universe was formed by God's command, so that the visible came forth from the invisible. By faith Abraham obeyed the call to leave his home for a land which he was to receive as a possession. He went away without knowing where he was to go. By faith, he settled in an alien land, which had been promised him, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him to the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself was enabled to conceive, though she was past the age, because she judged that God, who had promised, would keep faith. Therefore, from one man, a man as good as dead, there sprang descendants as numerous as the stars in the heavens or the countless grains of sand on the seashore. All these died in faith, Although they had not received the things promised, yet they had seen them from far ahead and welcomed them and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens without fixed abode on earth. Those who speak in that way show plainly that they are looking for a country of their own. Their thoughts had been with the country they had left. If their thoughts had been with the country they had left, they could have found opportunity to return. Instead, we find them longing for a better country, a heavenly one. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has a city ready for them. The Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 to 40 which can be found on page 63 in the Pew Bible. <coughs> Have no fear, little flock, for your Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. 
Sell your possessions and give to charity. Provide for yourselves purses that do not wear out, a never-failing treasure in heaven, where no thief can get near it, no moth destroy it. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Be ready for action with your robes hitched up and your lamps alight. Be like people who wait for the master's return from a wedding party, ready to let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. Happy are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will hitch up his robe, seat them at the table, and come and wait on them. If it is the middle of the night or before dawn when he comes, and he still finds them awake, then they are happy indeed. Remember, if the householder had known at what time the burglar was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. So hold yourselves in readiness, because the Son of Man will come at a time when you least expect him. Amen. Let us sing together again hymn 739, The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord, hymn 739.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On a holiday trip to America a number of years ago, I had friends who asked me to look out for a calendar while I was there and asked me to buy it for them. Its title would have been something like Grandma's Calendar or Grandpa's Calendar. And it was like those usual appointment calendars that have space to write what's happening each day or each week. But instead of the spaces in the calendar being there to list appointments or holidays or birthdays, what it did was it asked questions and allowed the space to be filled in by the person, the grandma or the grandpa. What is your favorite type of food? What are you most proud of? Where would you like to visit and you've never visited? Who do you most admire? What is most important to you? Write down your earliest memory. What do you most remember about your grandparents? You get the idea, a list of questions to make the person fill in the calendar, which then becomes an interesting record. The thought is, I suppose, that you tidy it away until someone finds it when you're dead or you give it to a grandchild, say, so that they can read about your life. Often it asks questions any interested family member would like to know the answer to, but doesn't make the time to ask or doesn't think to ask. In the end, although I looked out for such a calendar, sadly, I didn't come across one. Other people, though, do not need such an incentive and are more happily able to set about writing down things that have happened in their lives. Ralph Milton, a Canadian writer, when he was about 70, wrote, These years are my Sabbath a time to reflect on the meaning and significance of my seven decades. I must write our family story now so that when my children and grandchildren ask, who am I and where did I come from, there'll be stories through which they may discover their roots. And I must write my story now for myself because in doing that, I will discover more of the meaning of my own life and God's working in it. He goes on, I've written a pile of books, so I've learned never to start a book by thinking of a title. Nor will I start writing at the beginning. I'll start with the first story that pops into my head, then the next, then the next. When I run dry, I'll start branching out. This summer, my wife and her siblings, plus assorted spouses, will get together for a family reunion. I'll ask them to bring along any memorabilia they may have, and we'll sit around a picnic table with a cassette recorder running, recalling the stories of their childhood and retelling as many of the stories as they can remember of their parents and relatives. I'll do a similar sort of thing with my side of the family. We'll also fuss over those old pictures and try to recall who that person might be who's standing next to Uncle Henry. We'll jot the names and other information on sticky notes and place them onto photos. Then I'll go back home and write down all those stories using their own words as much as possible. This book is for my children and grandchildren. And secondly, for members of the extended family. I'll probably print a dozen copies on my own printer and have them nicely bound. 
At that point, I'll decide on a title. My Christmas shopping will be done for this year. He concludes, I find myself inspired by Hebrews chapter 11 and how the stories of our ancestors strengthen our faith. It is my prayer that years from now, my children and grandchildren will read this family history as part of their story and through it may learn something of the pilgrim souls that people my book how we struggled for meaning and purpose in life, and sometimes, like Abraham and Sarah, felt the warm, gentle hand of God moving us towards faithfulness. I too love that passage from Hebrews. It is the sense of looking back at the people of many generations ago and seeing that they had deep faith and trusted in God. And that allowed them to step out from where they were into a future that was often rather uncertain. It was their faith that convinced them of realities they did not see and made them look ahead as they journeyed, longing for a better country, a heavenly one. That continual stepping out in faith has carried on generation after generation until our day and our faith. The passage makes you feel part of this great pilgrim people. I have been here since spring 2011 and for those first 10 years, as well as lead worship in the town, the regular pattern of worship include leading worship here week by week as well. As you know, the church building here has been up for sale and an offer has been accepted subject to the satisfactory conclusion of missives and I hope they will be concluded soon. Nearer the date of entry, I intended to have a final act of worship here but as you know, I'm moving to a new post. And since the 5th of November will be my last Sunday with you, then that means today will be my last Sunday morning leading worship here in Strathkinnis Church. I cannot help but reflect back and remember people who used to worship here and who have died or who lived here and worshipped here and who moved away. Someone recently said endings and new beginnings are important. And I hope that a final service will be organized here at the appropriate time. A chance to give thanks for the past service and faithfulness of so many. And to think about the present and to look to the future and how to continue to be the church faithfully in all parts of this parish both in St. Andrews and here in Strathkinnis. The church has a long history in the village and because the building is being sold does not mean that the church disappears. Hebrews reminds us of people of faith and lists what they did. We all make up God's pilgrim people and need to be attentive to what that means for our life and our service. Acknowledging, recognizing, and appreciating the past, but always stepping out into the future. Just as Grandpa's calendar could be filled in, or as Ralph Milton had written his family stories, these could only happen for the benefit of others because people had taken the time and made the effort to write down the stories so that they were not lost. The same things happen to make sure we can have a Bible, the Old and New Testaments, filled with stories to help us learn about God and grow in faith. At times it's okay to look back 
Indeed, often it's okay to look back as long as we appreciate that we live in today and we're heading for tomorrow. I have a book of stories compiled by a well-known American preacher called Fred Craddock. Indeed, at one time, he was voted one of the top 10 living preachers by Newsweek. He tells this story about how a faithful life is often made up of many little acts. Craddock says, I pictured myself against a grey wall and some soldier saying, one last chance to deny Christ and live. I confessed my faith, and they said, ready, aim, fire. The body slumped. The flag was at half-mast, and widows were weeping in the afternoon. Later, a monument is built, and people come with their cameras. Johnny, you stand over there where Fred gave his life. Let's get your picture. I was sincere then, he says, as I have been these 45 years since. I give my life. But nobody warned me that I could not write one big check. I've had to write 45 years worth of little checks. 87 cents. 21 cents. A dollar and three cents. The ends just nibbled away at this giving of life. Ultimately, even if our personal story doesn't make it into a book, God knows our name and the number of hairs on our heads. God knows our story. Whether like Abraham or Sarah, we appear in a book that much of the world has read because of our great faith or our great acts, or a book that only a few have read, or indeed do not ever appear in a book, but simply are important to those closest to us, our friends, our relatives. That does not matter. What matters is that we become part of this enduring river of faith, a pilgrim people, aware of where we have come from, with faith giving substance to our hopes and convincing us of realities we do not see. And a people always on pilgrimage, longing for a better country. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
We sing now hymn 742, Rejoice in God's Saints, today and all days, hymn 742. There's a response in our prayers of intercession today. When I say God of mercy, you're all invited to respond, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, some of us may feel our faith is strong and others that our faith is weak. Yet you promised us the Holy Spirit to be with us always, even if we were feeling low. So with this assurance of the Spirit's presence, we ask you to accept our prayers. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us in silence pray for the church. Faithful God, you formed your church from a collection of individuals. You showed them mercy and gave them faith that they might through their lives proclaim your salvation to all. Strengthen those whom you choose today that they may endure trials which come before them yet hold fast to their belief in you. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us in silence pray for creation.
creator of all. You entrusted the earth to the human race, yet we disrupt its peace with violence and corrupt its purity with our greed. Prevent your people from ravaging creation that coming generations may inherit lands brimming with life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us in silence pray for peace in the world. Judge of the nations, you created humanity for salvation, not destruction, and sent your Son to guide us into the way of peace. Enable people of every race and nation to accept each other as sisters and brothers, your children. And today especially we pray for Ukraine and Israel. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who suffer any sorrow or trial. Compassionate God, your Son gives rest to those with heavy burdens. Heal the sick in body, mind, and spirit. Lift up the depressed. Befriend those who grieve. Comfort the anxious. Stand with all victims of abuse and other crimes. Fill all your people with your Holy Spirit that they may bear each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, made known to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, all that we have comes from you. As tokens of our thanks and appreciation, accept not only our offering of money, but the offering of our very lives. May the money we offer be used wisely by your church to spread your light throughout the world and may our lives be used by you to touch people in our communities in ways we cannot even imagine. And lastly, hear us as we sum up all our prayers saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Can I refer you please to the notices on the back of the order of service sheet? You're all warmly invited to stay and join us for tea and coffee in the hall and the heating in the hall is working. The service on the 15th of October will be in St. Mark's Church in St. Andrews at 10 o'clock. The Kirk session meets this Tuesday 10th of October at 7 o'clock in the Hope Park Hall. Note the office will be closed tomorrow, so it will be open simply Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday this coming week. Thank you to everyone that helped with caring means sharing. You could still give a donation if you've not done so yet. Details are there in the print and so far we've raised £3,180 including gift aid, so that's a terrific amount, more than a four-figure sum going to each of the three good causes. Super Friday began last Friday, a chance to come together, have some soup and a cuppa and some, a home bake, 
a suggested donation of a pound. Everyone's most welcome. That's every Friday from 12 to 2. I'm moving now into the research phase of my DMIN, the final project. The title is Worship Outdoors, the promotion of spiritual reflections on beauty and awe as a way to develop interest in the possibility of worship outdoors in St. Andrews. Over the next three weeks, worship will consider beauty, then awe, then worship outdoors. And each act will be followed by a workshop, and you're all invited both the worship and to the workshops. Uh, I'm still trying to settle on a day for the workshops. It could well turn out to be the Saturday afternoon, but perhaps not. So there'll be more details about the finalised day next week. Um, before the act of worship next week, there will be a short questionnaire issued with the order of service. You're all invited if you would like. You're under no obligation, but if you would like, it'd be helpful if you could fill in that questionnaire. And then again, after the third act of worship, another short questionnaire. And again, people are invited to fill those in. And the more material I get, the more helpful that will be. So please do consider completing one of them. And we'll make sure pens are available next week too, in case you've forgotten a pen. Our closing praise is hymn 182. Now thank we all our God, hymn 182. Our worship in this place is over. Our worship in the wider world begins again. Go in peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and evermore. Mm -hmm.